Welcome to another Drive Teams tutorial in which we will focus on the columns element. More exactly how the element works and how you can basically build columns on your website. So first things first, open the page or post on which you plan to work and then simply drag and drop the columns element onto your canvas. Now right off the bat, you can see that you can choose how many columns you would like to have. So you can have two, three or four, but even more if you want. And I'm going to show you later how to do just that. So for example, if I choose this one, you can see how the columns would look like and what is the actual layout that you will be using. Now, if you're not pleased with the chosen format, you can always come right here in between the columns and adjust the layout manually from this dotted line. You can simply drag it from left to right. You can see the percentage in each column. So feel free to play around with these percentages until you find the desired proportions. And if this still hasn't done the trick for you, you can click on reset column layout and then revert the changes. Or if you want, you can pick another layout altogether. In addition to what I've shown you until now, you can see that here in the left sidebar, we still have several options to go through. So first you have the gutter width slider right here to adjust the space between the columns. And next from here, from the minimum height slider, you can actually change the height of the columns. Next, you can use these three buttons to change the vertical positioning of the content of each column. So if I would have some text here or any kind of content, then this is where I can adjust its placement within the column. The reverse column order toggle will basically switch the position of the columns between them. And after I add some content here, I'm going to activate this toggle to show you what happens. And now we reached this option, the wrapping feature, which means that once you activate it, the columns will not be resizable anymore. So you can see that as soon as I switch the toggle, this slider has appeared right under. And basically the column breakpoint is the minimum width a column will shrink before it will be stacked on top of each other. And this also shows you how the columns will be displayed on different screen sizes. And I'm going to go ahead and deactivate this and show you what happens if you want to edit each column individually. So let's go with this one from here. You can see that the options have appeared in the left sidebar. It's a new set of options that it's only relevant to this selected column. So if you have the enabled fixed width option enabled, the size of this column will be displayed in pixels. Whilst if this option is turned off, the size will be displayed in percentage. This is where you can view if it's in pixel units or in percentage. Now, regardless of the screen size on which I'm viewing this, that one column that has the fixed width enabled will keep its size, whilst the other two will change their proportions and occupy more or less depending on the size of the screen. And this is due to the fact that the relative units such as percentages will scale in relationship to another object, whilst the pixel is an absolute unit or in other words, a fixed measurable unit. And you need to keep in mind that this option cannot be used on all your columns at once. At least one of your columns will have this option disabled automatically. So this is enabled, this is enabled, but for this one, I cannot activate the fixed width anymore. Now let me just select my middle column from here and show you the remaining options. So the following two are rather straightforward. From this slider, you can adjust the width. And from here, you can also decide how you would like to place your content within the column. So in the upper part, center line, or in the lower part. And of course, if you want, you can simply choose the no style option, which is also enabled by default. Now let me show you how to add content to your columns. So basically what you can do is simply drag and drop any element from this right sidebar list and place it in your column. I'm going to select this one. And now I have some content added to my first column. Now, if I want to add another image in my second column, I can do the same process once more. But if I want to speed up the process, I can duplicate the image that I already have and then simply drag and drop it inside the second column and then simply replace the image with a new one. And that's pretty much it. And you can do that with any element, not just with images. Now, for example, I can also just duplicate this already existing text from my page and do the same, drag and drop it in my third column. And then after I select it, I can go ahead and use the left sidebar options of the text element, as well as the options for the column itself or for the entire element. So here, feel free to open this right sidebar list of elements and just add as many as you would like right here and then use the corresponding options of each element. 
you just need to make sure that the element you would like to edit it's highlighted in the breadcrumbs so that you're not modifying something else from your page now this would be the first method you can use if you want to add columns to your page i will go ahead and delete the element that i have at the moment and show you another way in which you can create the same layout so if you want to achieve the exact same layout, for example, but without using the columns element, you can simply drag and drop the same elements to your background section and place them next to each other. So I'm going to place this second image next to my first one. And then I'm going to duplicate again this text and drag it to the right side of my second image. And now you can see that all the content that I've placed, regardless whether it was images or text, has been added in this columns layout. So clicking here on this text, for example, will show me in the breadcrumbs that this is placed within a columns element that I can start using exactly like the one from the list of elements. And if, for example, I want to reverse the column order, just as I've mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, I can simply activate this toggle and you can see that the last column that I had here has become now my first column. Now, what I can do if I want to use a column layout that has more columns than the ones that I can select here by default. So if I want to do that, I can just drag and drop as many elements as I want and place them next to each other and constantly create new columns depending on what I actually need. Let's also go with an icon this time and then a number counter so you can see that by doing that I've simply added as many columns as needed and I can go ahead and edit each of them individually and make the adjustments that are needed right here in the left sidebar in order to achieve the layout that I want. Now this concludes our tutorial about the columns element. As usual, don't hesitate to check out other tutorials that we have in our knowledge base if you want to find out more about our products and our features.